So hello everyone, welcome back. Okay, so today we have a problem for mechanics and this question is taken from Russian Olympiad. Okay, so the question states, we have a smooth hill whose height is h and mass is m and it is resting on a smooth horizontal plane and a small washer of mass m lies on its top. After a slight push, the washer rolls down the hill and slides perpendicular to a massive vertical wall that is moving along the plane towards the hill with a velocity of u. Having experienced a perfectly elastic collision with the wall, the washer slides in the opposite direction towards the hill. With what minimum velocity u must the wall move for the washer to overcome the hill? Okay, so basically this washer rolls down and uh, obviously the hill will also move towards the left and after some time it will collide with the massive wall and then it will rebound with some velocity. So we want to figure out the value of u such that the washer after its collision with the wall is able to reach back the top of the hill. So yeah, that's the question. So, so first give it a try guys and then check out the solution. Now before uh, solving this question, let, uh, let's discuss the result first. So, and that's related to kinetic energies, okay? Let's take a reference frame, which is basically a coordinate system and I'm gonna call it S. So S is basically my system which is at rest okay so this is so you can basically call it the ground frame as well now if we have some system of particles okay so m1 m2 so on and till mi um, we can easily find out its kinetic energy with respect to the frame of reference s as just the sigma of half mi vi square right so it's pretty straightforward um, so i'm just going to call this as ks Okay, so Ks would be the kinetic energy of the system of particles in the S frame. Okay, so now let's say the center of mass of the system of particles has some velocity of u in some arbitrary direction. Okay, so this is the center of mass of the particles. Then the thing is we can write this Ks. Okay, so now I'm going to just state the result first. So basically the kinetic energy in the S frame, we can also write it as half total mass times u squared plus kcm. Okay, so now I'm going to explain what this is. So this term over here, it looks like we took all the masses and kind of kept it uh, at the center of mass and we assumed that it is moving with a speed u, right? In that case, the mass of the particle will be the total mass and the speed is u. So, so the kinetic energy becomes half total mass u squared. And this term over here, kcm, ks was the kinetic energy in the s frame. So kcm would be the kinetic energy of the system in the cm frame. So, so basically if we take the center of mass as our reference, okay, so let's just take it as some other coordinate system s dash. So in this frame, obviously the velocities of all these particles will be different. So if you find out the kinetic energy in this frame, that is what KCM is going to be. I mean, this is uh, pretty easy to prove. I just don't want this video to be too lengthy. So if you want the proof for this, you can check out uh, David Morin book. So, and it is present in the page 163. Okay. Okay. So in short, if we have a system of particles and we want to write down the total kinetic energy, in the ground frame, let's say. So we can just write it as half total mass times u squared. And here u is the velocity of the center of mass, okay? As we can see, plus the kinetic energy of the system in the center of mass frame, okay? And this can kind of simplify this problem uh, in comparison to if you guys are using this definition for writing down the kinetic energy of the system. Okay, so now the next thing is that uh, if it's a two particle problem, so we have particles m1 and m2, and m1 has some velocity v1, and m2 has some velocity v2. Okay, and obviously I'm saying v1 and v2 with respect to ground frame, okay, or s frame. Here obviously ks is going to be half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared, but here uh, the kcm term, which is the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, it takes a very interesting form and that is half the reduced mass of the system times uh, the difference in velocity vectors. You take the mod of it and square it, okay? Now this, we can also write it as half mu v12 squared, okay? So you find out the relative velocity of these two particles, take its modulus and square it. So that is v12 squared. And this term over here, which is, this is called the reduced mass and this is nothing but the product of those masses divided by its sum, okay? Now this is also very easy to prove. So all you have to do is subtract vcm from v1 vector and v2 vector and do sigma of half m1 v1 cm squared plus half m2 v2 cm squared and that will give you the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame. So I have already proved this result in another video. I'll just link it in the description if you guys want it. So yeah, if we have a two particle system, then the thing is this kcm over here, which takes a nice form of half mu v12 squared. And the momentum also has a very interesting result. So the momentum of let's say particle one 
okay in the center of mass frame equals the reduced mass multiplied by v12 vector okay so this is also something that i've proved earlier and i'll it will be in that video okay i mean if you guys can also prove it by yourself all you have to do is find the velocity of particle one in the center of mass frame and do mass into velocity that's how we find momentum right so yeah it simplifies as reduced mass multiplied by v12 vector and for the other particle it will be v21 vector okay so this is basically all we need for this question so now we can start discussing the main idea is obviously energy conservation right so we'll say that this is the initial situation everything is at rest and finally the washer will uh, reach the ground and it will have some velocity in the right direction let's say v1 and the hill will also have some velocity in the leftward direction which let's just call it as v2 so now uh, the obviously the standard way of doing it is that the particle drop down by a height of h so we'll just say mgh equals half mv1 squared plus half mv2 squared right and that would be one equation and the second equation would be conserving momentum in the x direction and then we can solve for v1 and v2 so that is basically going by this route so we'll be taking this route to write down the kinetic energy terms okay so once so let's just write it down once again so ks was equal to half total mass times the velocity of center of mass squared plus half mu v12 squared okay so the kcm term is just half mu v12 squared and this is a two particle problem anyway okay so now uh, once again all we have to do is just uh, write down the conservation of energy expression so the initial kinetic energy is obviously zero everything is at rest and we can take the ground as the zero potential energy level so the initial potential energy will be mgh and we can just ignore the potential energy of the hill right because it's not changing so we can just ignore that so zero plus mgh would be equal to uh, the final potential energy is zero and the final kinetic energy so if you observe something guys initially the velocity of center of mass or u is zero right and in the final situation also u is zero and the reason for that is pretty obvious it's because if you take m both these masses as a system there is no force in the horizontal direction no net force in the horizontal direction so and if there is no net force there is no acm in the x direction which means vcm would be the same as the starting which means vcm is just zero so u will be zero in the final case as well okay so this half m u squared it was zero at the start and it was zero at the end whereas this term over here the second term it's zero at the beginning because v1 and v2 are both zero so their difference is also zero uh, but at the end it's different it will be half mu and the vector difference of them will be as they are in the opposite direction they'll get added up so it will be v1 plus v2 whole squared okay i'm just gonna write it as v12 itself squared so from here we can easily get v12 the magnitude of it this particular value so basically we can directly get uh, v12 using this result and now the thing is we'll use the momentum result so as we discussed in the last page uh, the momentum of the particle in the center of mass frame is mu v12 right so the interesting thing here is that in this particular case it will be the same even in ground frame because the center of mass and the ground frame are both at rest right so the that result will work even here so the momentum is just going to be mu times v12 so i'm just going to consider the magnitude of it right i'm not caring about because i already know the direction so small m will move towards the right so its momentum will be towards the right and capital m uh, has the same magnitude in for momentum which is mu v12 but in the opposite direction okay now if you observe something this uh, term over here mu into v12 this is already known because we know v12 so if we know the momentum it's easy to find the velocity because all we have to do is divide the momentum with the mass of the particle so here we'll divide with small m for the other for the hill we can just divide it with capital m so that will give us the velocity of the hill and the velocity of the particle respectively so, uh, so the basically the advantage of this is that the algebra becomes a bit easier so you can directly get v12 and from the momentum expression you can get the velocities as well so now let's bring our wall okay so now if we consider the wall um, it was moving towards the left with a speed of u okay so now the next thing is that the wall will collide with the particle now uh, this is like a simple result from collision so it's just that uh, when this particle collides with the wall it will rebound with a velocity that is two times u greater than its original velocity so so basically the particle after uh, after collision it will rebound uh, with a speed of mu v12 by m which was the original velocity the original velocity increases by a factor of two times the velocity of the wall 
Okay, so this is um, keeping in mind the assumption that the wall is massive in comparison to the tiny mass and its momentum does not change by that much. Okay, so and then you can use the fact that the collision is elastic to prove this. So yeah, that was it for the wall. And now, so now basically we have M running towards the left and hill already was running towards the left. Now, obviously, if we want small m to overtake the hill, this has to be greater than the velocity of the hill itself, right? Uh, but we want it to be enough so that the mass small m can reach the top of the hill. So let's try to draw the final situation. Now, while the mass will be climbing on the hill, the it will accelerate the hill even more. So, uh, but we want the mass to reach the top of the hill, okay? So in the limiting case, uh, we can imagine that when the mass m reaches the top, both of them will move with a common velocity. So let's say that velocity is some v3. In the, so this particular velocity should be such that when mass m reaches the top, it should come to rest relative to the hill. Okay, And if the kinetic energy is greater than this amount, then it will overtake the hill. Uh, and if it is less, it, it won't be able to reach the top. So yeah, basically this is going to be the final situation. Okay, so now we can again conserve energy between this state and this state over here. Now here, if you observe something, unlike the first case where the center of mass was at rest, uh, basically the center of mass was at rest at the top and it was at rest at the bottom. Now, uh, now one more thing guys, the, when the particle is actually sliding down the hill, the center of mass is not at rest, if you observe. Because if you observe the when the particle is sliding downhill, it has some x velocity and it has some y velocity. So now this y velocity comes because the particle is accelerating. So, and if it is accelerating, it means that the center of mass uh, is also moving down. The thing is the center of mass is not at rest while the particle is sliding downhill, but when it is at the top and when the particle reaches the bottom, it was at rest. Okay, okay, but here uh, obviously as the smaller mass is moving towards the left and the hill is also moving towards the left, center of mass will have some non-zero velocity towards the left. But the thing is we know that the velocity in the velocity of the center of mass in the x direction, it won't change because the net force in the x direction is zero. So the only difference is that the half mu squared term, right, it will be non-zero. Uh, in the first case, it was zero, but in this case, it will be non-zero, but it will get cancelled in both sides because it's the same at the beginning and it will be the same at the end as well. Okay, so even in this case, the kinetic energy expression is simplified. So once again, let's just use the result. So, okay, let's, so let's just uh, write down the final situation energy first. So finally, the mass M has climbed uphill. So its potential energy will be MGH and the kinetic energy, if we use the original result, so I'm going to write down the entire thing anyway, mm, thing anyway. So it will be half M U squared. So U is the velocity of the center of mass in this particular case, okay? And half mu V12 squared. If you observe in the final situation, both of them have the same velocity. So which means V12 will just be zero. So that term is zero in the final situation, okay? And in the right hand side, and in this particular case over here, it uh, using the result, it will be half m u squared. So that term is not going to change. Uh, I should write this as mt. So this is the total mass, not the capital M mass and plus the half mu. Um, I'm just going to call this as V12 dash, right? Because it's different than the first one. So this is the final kinetic energy. And as you can see, this thing just cancels off, right? Because initial in the initial situation and the final situation, it, it turns out to be the same. And hence we can cancel that thing off. And yeah, the initially the mass was on the ground. So the potential energy is just zero. So yeah, this is the advantage of using this. It just simplifies the energy conservation equation by a lot. Okay, so now if you compare or look at the first energy conservation equation and the second, the on one side we have MGH and here also we have MGH, uh, which means that RHS also has to be equal. And if you compare the RHS, then what you end up getting is that V12 is equal to V12 dash. So the initial relative velocity is equal to the final rel relative velocity in terms of magnitude. So now basically all we have to do is substitute the values. Now, what is V12 dash? It's the magnitude of the relative velocities in this case, right? So obviously this is bigger. So we'll write this minus this, right? So V12 dash will be velocity of small m mass is mu V12 by small m plus 2u. And the velocity of the hill was mu V12 divided by capital M. So this thing minus mu V12 divided by capital M. Okay, so now we can take the V12 terms to one side. And after rearranging and substituting the value for mu, um, you can solve for the expression of 
u. So this is the minimum speed with which the wall should move so that the particle is able to reclimb the hill. Okay, so that was it for this video. If, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.